Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica and welcome. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I created these fall DIYs using all Dollar Tree products, including this beautiful wood bead garland that is one of my favorites for sure. But before we get started, if you're new here, I would love for you to join us by subscribing down below. We are going to jump right into the DIYs with this would be garland because I could not wait to share this craft with you guys. So I got this strand of wood beads at the Dollar Tree. I was shocked. I thought that these were just absolutely stunning and I could not believe how many you get in one strand for a dollar. It was definitely a great find, but if you cannot find these at your Dollar Tree, I found ones that were very similar on Amazon and they were still really reasonably priced. I will leave those linked down below for you guys. And the other things that I picked up at Dollar Tree were these adorable little pumpkins how cute are they you get five in a pack they had some different colors for this diy i went with the black and white buffalo check i thought that they were just really cute and i'm also going to be using this twine from the dollar tree as well as this gingham ribbon so i think this one i got last year at dollar tree they might have it again this year if not this ribbon is super easy to find at hobby lobby and michael's and kind of anywhere where you can get craft supplies so usually I make my would-be garlands with a twine strand to string the beads, but since we're going to be adding these pumpkins, that would be too thick to get through the pumpkin. So I'm going to be doing it a little bit different today. And to help me out, I'm going to be using this really long doll needle and also some thread. So doll needles are not needed for this at all, but I do find that they come in handy for crafting, so I always have some on hand. So that's what I'm going to be using here. So to do this, I'm going to be threading my needle, but this thread is a little bit thin for a wood bead garland, so I am going to be doubling it up. But then I'm just going to set that aside and get started on my tassels. So to make my tassel, I'm just taking that gingham ribbon and just measuring it around my hand by folding it in half. And then I'm just going to be setting this piece aside until I need it. And now I'm just going to take that twine and wrap it around my four fingers a bunch of times. It just depends on how thick you want your tassel to be. And then you just want to slide it off your hand carefully and then just cut the strands on one side. So I'm just cutting through there and now I'm just going to fold them in half. I want to keep my finger in the center there so I don't lose the head of the tassel. And then I'm just going to be wrapping that gingham ribbon right around the top of it. Now, while holding it in place, I'm going to wrap some more twine around it just to secure the head and bind it. And then I'm going to be tying that into a knot and then I trimmed off the extra pieces. This step is optional, but I do like to take an extra piece of twine and just put it through the head and form a knot with it. That way it just helps to shape the head of the tassel a little bit more rounded and I think it just gives it a really pretty appearance. But like I said, this is totally optional, so I just tied mine off and now I'm hiding that knot underneath the head of the tassel. Then I just pulled everything straight and gave it a nice trim so it was even. Now to start my strand, I'm just putting my needle through the head of my tassel, bringing it all the way to the bottom of that thread and just knotting it off with about three or four knots. And now I'm going to get started on my strand. So for this, I decided to do 10 beads and then one pumpkin. So you'll see, I think I ended up using 60 beads in total and I used all five pumpkins. So once I had all 10 beads on there, I just took my doll needle and this is where it definitely comes in handy. And I just pierced it right through the center of that pumpkin, pulled it all the way through and then followed that with another 10 beads. I do think that embroidery thread would be absolutely perfect for this instead of just using regular sewing thread, but I did not have any on hand, so that is why I did this. It worked out totally fine in the end, but I do think that embroidery thread is nice and thick, so it might work a little bit better. So here I have all 60 of my beads as well as my five pumpkins, and then to finish it off, I'm just going to be tying my last tassel on. And that is it. Super simple, really adorable. I just love the way this one turned out. I think it's a really fun take on a wood bead garland. It kind of just adds a bit of fun to it with those plush pumpkins and the gingham print. I just absolutely love the way this one turned out. This next project might be my favorite from this whole video. So I'm going to start off with this shadow box from the Dollar Tree. It's really nice quality. I love the thick, dark wood. It was just so stunning, so I definitely had to pick that up. I'm also going to be using this set of four mini pumpkins and these mini hay bales. 
I love these, you guys. I don't know if it's just me, but I love miniatures. I think they're adorable. And the second I saw them, I knew I had to use them in a craft. So I'm going to get started first on my pumpkins. So they're adorable. They're so cute. But the color was not really what I was looking for, so I decided to give them a paint job. So first I'm just going to prep them for painting, and to do that I'm just going to be pulling out this metal wire because we are not going to need that for this craft. Be careful, I ripped a little bit of the foam off on that one, but they do come out pretty easily. And then for the stems, I'm just going to take those out as well, but make sure you save these. We're going to need these. They come out really easily. You can see they have little teeth on them, so they also go back in very easily as well, but we don't want to get paint on those, so you can just pop them out, put them somewhere safe so you don't lose them, and now we can get to painting. So for this, I'm going to be using my favorite chalk paint. I always use this one. I'll leave this one linked down below for you guys. I just get it at Amazon. So I'm going to be doing two pumpkins in white and two pumpkins in orange but I wanted kind of a muted orange so I used that chalk paint as my base and I just added a little bit of orange acrylic paint into it and this is why I love painting with chalk paint it just covers up those colors so quickly so I just love to use it for projects like this and then once my four pumpkins were all dry I wanted to add a little bit of definition so I took a clean paintbrush I dipped it into some dark brown paint and I wiped off most of the paint because I did not want a lot of it on there and I just went in and defined those pumpkin lines a little bit more now that they're all dry I can just put my stems back in them and we can get to crafting the first thing we have to do is to remove this leaf from the center of the shadow box so it comes off really easily it's just kind of stuck to there with some foam but you do have to remove that foam as well and now you'll see here that there's this paper backing you don't really have to worry about removing all of it i didn't but i did want to make sure that i took up any pieces that were sticking up because i wanted it to be flat and next you're just going to need this free printable so you can find this one on my blog it is sized perfectly for this shadow box to make it all super easy for you so here's my blog i'm going to leave the link for this down below just scroll all the way to the bottom of the article and here you'll see a bunch of links for products that i used as well as the free printable so you can just click on that print it at home and you're ready to go so i decided to print mine on cardstock just to make it a little bit more durable you do not have to do this you can use regular printer paper but if you do use regular printer paper you might want to remove this full background because it might peek through a little bit or you can just cut a second piece of paper just plain white paper and double up basically that way that old background does not peek through to your new background now you can just go ahead and trim it all out and you want to make sure you're cutting directly on that black line and then you can test it just to make sure it fits into your shadow box so i can see here that mine was not fitting perfectly so i just wanted to kind of make sure i could just take it out really gently so i used actually the pick that was from the bottom of the pumpkin earlier just to kind of pop it out and I'm just going to go ahead and trim a little bit more from the bottom as well as the side and then it will just fit perfectly in there so I can just kind of test it out here before I put any glue and now that I know it's going to fit without a problem I put some glue into the four corners of my box and you want to start off with the top because you want to make sure that your picture is all the way at the top of the frame and if you have a little bit of a gap at the bottom, it is not a big deal at all. You can see I have a tiny one right there because we are going to be covering that up with our hay bales and our pumpkins. And now is the fun part. We get to decorate it however we like. So you might choose to decorate yours a little bit differently than mine. I kind of played around with it a little bit to figure out what kind of fit best. And for me, I found that I really liked the look of four hay bales and only three pumpkins, but you might want to put all four pumpkins in yours. And that's the really fun part about these kind of crafts is you really get to customize them and make them however you like. As you can see, I did go back and forth a couple of times, but I ultimately decided to do two of the orange pumpkins and one white pumpkin at the top of my hay bale. And now you just have to glue everything in to secure it. I'm pretty sure that this one is going to be going on my tear tray when I decorate this year. I just absolutely love it. Like I said before, I just love miniatures. They're so cute. 
how can you not love them but this one was definitely a fun craft and i just think the overall look is adorable this next one is so easy and quick that i can barely call it a diy but i mean it's it's kind of a diy you're putting it together yourself so you're just going to need one of these frames from the dollar tree as well as one of these burlap leaves they come five in a pack so i'm going to have four extra for a future craft which is awesome so to get started i'm just removing everything out of this frame so you'll see here once you pop off that back it has two panes of glass you just want to remove that paper that is in the center of them then you can take one of your leaves and just turn it over and very carefully remove that wire that is in the back. We're not going to need it. It does come off really quickly. You just want to be sure not to rip that burlap while you're pulling it off. And now you can just put your leaf on one pane of glass. I put mine on a bit of a diagonal and then you can just put that second piece of glass right on top. Just sandwich it right in between there and then put it back into your frame, put the backing in, secure the tabs, and you are done. Like I said, this one is a bit of a stretch to call it a DIY because it's super quick and easy, but I love the look of this one. If you did multiples of these and kind of line them up, so beautiful. This next DIY, I'm going to be starting off with these two metallic pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, and we are going to be doing a paint refresh. So I did this a couple videos back on some other figurines, and I love the look of it, so I wanted to try it out with these pumpkins. And here they are with some white spray paint. So I used my favorite matte white spray paint. I will leave that link down below. And already, I think that they are looking so much better but I thought it would be a really cute touch just to wrap some twine around the stem. So to do that, I'm just putting some hot glue right in the back of the stem there. And I'm just going to be slowly pressing my twine into it. And then once that dries, I put a little bit more hot glue and I'm just going to take my time and wrap my twine all the way up the stem. This is another really easy craft, but it's such a quick and fun way to kind of update something and just make it look a lot more elegant and a lot more clean. And if you cannot find these exact pumpkins at the Dollar Tree, they have a ton this year and this would work with really any of them. They have a bunch of different sizes and shapes and I was pretty impressed with the inventory that they had, but these were the two that I picked up and I think that they just look really adorable like this. So I just went ahead and I did that same technique with my second pumpkin. I just wrapped it all the way around and that is it. Really simple but adorable and these definitely fit my decor a bit more than the metallic look. And now this next step is completely optional. If you guys are familiar with this channel, you already know what I'm doing. So I have these cork bottoms from Dollar Tree. I'll leave them linked down below. I get a big pack of them and I love to use these to just kind of use as furniture protectors on my little figurines. So you can just cut them to any size you like, peel off that backing and it sticks right on them and it just kind of finishes them off really nicely. And for our last DIY, we are going to be making a buffalo check welcome sign. So I'm starting off with this framed clothes picture hanger that I picked up at Dollar Tree, but I'm going to be replacing the clothespins with these. So these are like the medium sized clothespins from the crafter square. They come in the 24 count. And I'm also going to be using one of these metal word signs. So these come in a three pack. I used the harvest one, I think two videos back for a different craft. So I'm going to be using the welcome one today. And I'm also going to be using these buffalo check pumpkins. Also some leaves. I will show you those in a couple minutes. So I'm going to start off by just removing those clothes pins and those pictures. We're not going to need them. And now I'm going to be painting my welcome sign. So you do not need to paint this. It is a really pretty galvanized metal already. But since we were doing the buffalo check, I thought that white would really make it pop a little bit more. So I'm just going to be painting that in some of my white chalk paint. While that is drying, I'm just going to start assembling my sign. So for this, I decided to use two of the buffalo check leaves and one of the pumpkins but it's totally up to you how you kind of want to mix and match them they also have those really pretty orange ones in the pack if that is more of your color theme so now i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to be close pinning these to the line here and you can glue these if you like if you want to hot glue them but you'll see i kind of picked it up and i did a bit of a shake test just to make sure that they were not going to come off but they didn't and i was shaking pretty good there and they didn't pop off they seemed really secure but if you want to hot glue them you can definitely do that 
And now I'm just going to be hot gluing my welcome sign right to the bottom here. And that was pretty much it. This next step is optional. I had this leftover buffalo check ribbon kind of scrap from last year and this was from the Dollar Tree. So I decided kind of at the last minute just to make a little bow and hot glue it to the top. And that is it. Your sign is done. If you do not hot glue the pumpkin and leaves to those clothespins, I think it would be a really fun idea to kind of change out the pictures seasonally. So you can do a different one for Halloween and maybe for Christmas, but it could be super versatile. And that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this, please do subscribe to my channel and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to turn on that notification bell. I have a bunch more really fun videos coming up for the fall and Halloween, and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. You can subscribe to my channel by just clicking my picture right here and check out this video for some more crafting fun.